The federal government of Nigeria has extended the gradual easing of the COVID-19 lockdown across the country by two additional weeks. This was made known by the chairman of the presidential task force, PTF, in COVID-19, Bas Mustafa, who also doubles as the secretary to the government of the federation, SGF. He made the call earlier today during the daily briefing of the task force in Abuja. To help us look at what the federal government should do during the extension of phased lockdown is Dr. Emerie Agunwa. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning, Felicity. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. And you? Super good. Good to have you on the program. Now, the presidential task force, in its wisdom, decided to extend the phased lockdown by another two weeks. Do you consider this a step in the right direction? Uh, absolutely. Seeing where we are as a country, I think is a proper step. Okay. Um, because what we have in the country now is um, we have two divergent opinions. We have people who are actually suffering from sicknesses. We also have people who are, their businesses are sick. So uh, I think trying to extend the lockdown in phases like this if for the next two weeks um, is an appropriate thing. But my little challenge with that whole concept is what are we doing in the two weeks gap to ensure that we emerge stronger and better? So are we just going to sit down in the house and uh, the government will just fold their hands and expect that by some kind of miraculous chance after two weeks things will get back to normal? Are we putting in some measures in place to ensure that that when when things get back to normal we can easily flow into the process we can easily uh, um, um, readjust and also uh, uh, reinvent ourselves properly as regards um, as um, people interaction and expressions across the nation so i think two weeks is cool but much more than the two weeks what i'm saying is how do we put in systems in place to ensure that after two weeks what we hope to achieve, we would achieve it. That's the main concern. Felicity. Okay, Nigerians were expecting the president to address them. There were um, rumors and unconfirmed reports to this, but that was discarded by an aide to the president, and, and the announcement of the extension was later made by the PTF. Now, how will you um, assess the mode of communication that's been employed by the presidency and those handling uh, this pandemic with um, Nigerians? I, I think the way the presidency is handling the communication is not satisfactory at all. Yeah, we expect to hear from the president as often as on. Um, he needs to give us up-to-date information as regards to plans and development systems they are putting in place um, it's bad enough that we the messages are not very frequent. Um, then to add to it that we had we wanted to listen to the president to hear his view, and now we are getting our laid down report as if um, we don't matter. The truth is that this is a country of 200 million Nigerians who have reposed a certain level of hope on the front man of the country called Mr. President. And the truth of the matter is that he needs to address us, even if it need be every night. The information, the, the update of coronavirus is something that the president shouldn't shy away from uh, intimating the people, even if he doesn't have to do even if he's not the one to do that. We have a vice president that can deputize for him, that can sit in and ensure that we have back-to-back -back information. Do, do, the, Dr. Agonwa, aren't you being um, optimistic, um, unnecessarily, some would say, considering the, uh, the modus operandi of this administration since the advent of the COVID-19? The president has addressed us all of twice. So what gives you uh, the mindset to think that um, he would give that responsibility to the vice president when he has not seen it as a priority and believes that the PTF is capable enough to handle the situation in the country? Uh, clearly, you, you know that uh, it's not about what he sees as priority or not. It's what the country sees as priority. He works for the country. He works for the populace. Yeah, it's us that will tell you what is priority for us. What is priority now is that we need our president or the presidency, as the case may be, to address the people as often as possible. We need information from the source. We are in that. We don't know what's going on. We hear all manner of rumors on television and on news as regards um, 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 
Madagascar drugs, a lot of things, a shutdown, not opening, interstate um, um, movement, and a couple of things. We need to hear from the person that we put in the office. We need to hear from his representative directly, regularly. The truth of the matter, we are not asking him to build any roads or bridges right now. Just tell us what is going on. Tell us what we are supposed to do. I don't think that's too much to ask. So we are saying that I'm not impressed with the level of communication. I'm not impressed with the level of um, um, transparency as regards this conversation. All we're saying is that as a people, we deserve to get information every now and then as regards the uh, developmental stages of this COVID period. We also need to know um, the focus areas. We also need to know what we need to do. We also need to know uh, the plan, how they came up with this plan. We also need to see that there is some kind of working committee surrounding this conversation not just um, some group of persons sitting down and coming up with the shop for all of us. We also need to see that the working communication, the working strategy, and we escalate it to the people every now and then, every day or every every two days. Let us, let the people be intimated. I mean, 9 o'clock news should be what everybody should be looking forward to right now because we are sure that the president's words and his voice and his opinions and his counsel and his advice will get across to all of us right now. There's a lot Let's of fear in the system. Let's move a little away from of, the yeah. issue of communication for a bit and look at the move by the Lagos state government. Uh, they are saying, rather, that they're considering um, fully reopening businesses, churches, and mosques, um, following guidelines, of course. With the present realities, yeah. of course, social distancing not being adhered to, people not using face masks as should, not doing proper hand washing and all of that. Should this really be something that the Lagos state government is considering, especially with the cases we just had, over 200? The, the truth of the matter is there's never been a problem with consideration, yeah? Nobody's saying they are, open, they are trying to get things back to normal, but it's a, it's a thought. They are considering it. The truth of the matter is that Lagos State is the economic hub of Nigeria, and if Lagos State is crippled economically, then we have more issues on our hands, much more than COVID, okay? Um, systems are getting shut down. Let's not talk about the numbers that churches generate in terms of income and revenue, okay? There's a lot of businesses hinged to the churches and religious organizations, and they have been, sh they've been shut down for the past seven to eight weeks. What it means is that a significant part of the economy is non-functional, okay? The schools are also creating a lot of instability at home. The schools being shut down. The resources for the people who own private schools are being shut down. And also a lot of instability for having kids always around. Level of con consumption is out of this room. And a lot of uh, things are going on right now. And we know that it's just a matter of time. If we're going to have what they call collateral damage. If we don't fix this problem right now, it's going to introduce us to a whole lot of problems that we cannot be able to handle um, directly. Okay, so I think considering the consideration for reopening schools and churches and place of worship is a is a welcome development. Whether they are going to adhere to to minimal um, numbers of people in place of worship or schools and social distancing, that also needs to be enforced. Regulation needs to be made and enforcement for this regulation needs to be kept. That's why we have police force. That's why we have a working government. And I trust that the Lagos State government uh, are absolutely on top of this matter so they know what they are doing. Let's wrap up this conversation with your thoughts on what your expectations are from the federal government as regards uh, what they should do um, in the next two weeks. Okay, so um, first of all, I think that there's a whole lot, there's a litany of lists for, for what I think the government should do. First of all, government should be able to provide uh these these tools that can help people live with this pandemic government should be able to make available at least 300 million face masks for 200 million nigerians we need that okay it's not something with, that's outside of your purview. you also need to ensure that we have ease and emergency systems just in case people collapse and that is not something a uh, collapse and faint already not something we need to uh, the phone numbers for emergencies ambulances uh, ambulances um, services is to made available immediately and much more and much more we also need to start in talking about the future post post covid era how many we've seen the we've seen the the um, dependency on human interaction how do we start raising structures and infrastructures that can enable digitalized conversation and and uh, non-human interaction in, in business involvement, okay? So that when things like this happen, we will not get into total shutdown like we are right now. And That's I think well. one of the things we want to do is to communicate with us every now and then. 
we deserve to have information on what's going on. Dr. Agonwa, thank you very much for your thoughts. Thank you, Felicity.